any comfortable position, either again on your back or seated. You can always sit in a chair on your couch. <laughs> Be realistic about where we are right now. But wherever you are, as you settle in, try to close your eyes to really turn inward. Allow yourself to be present in your body. You know, it's especially difficult when you're in your own home, not in your, you know, studio or gym where you're used to practicing. So either try to let go of those distractions or embrace the different sounds, people, pets around you. As I've been saying throughout my virtual teaching, there's nothing normal about what we're all going through right now. So don't expect yourself to feel normal. Just acknowledging how you feel today, whether that's mentally, physically, emotionally, and just be okay with that. Let go of any judgment. And start to connect with your breath. Deepening and lengthening each inhale and exhale. With each inhale, see if you can breathe in a little bit more positivity. Exhale any bad feelings you have, any bad vibes. Just let it all go. We don't have a lot of control over our lives right now, but we have control over our breath. So embrace that control here. Inhaling nice and long and deep. Exhaling, let it go. If you feel like you need to sigh it out the mouth, feel free to do that. And one more deep, long breath here in stillness. And if you aren't already on your back, go ahead and make your way down. And on your next inhale, come into a full body stretch. So you're taking the legs long, arms up over the head. Feel your spine lengthen. As you exhale, start to draw the knees in towards the chest. You can hold on to the top of the knees behind the legs or even just release the arms alongside the body. And we're just gonna rock side to side, massaging the low back on the floor. And keeping our knees bent, we'll release the feet down to the mat. And we're going to flow through a few rounds of bridge here just to warm our hamstrings and our spine. But really important to not turn your head towards your computer screen, phone screen, whatever you're watching this on. Try to keep the head looking up towards the ceiling. We're reaching our fingertips towards the heels. We'll inhale with the hips down on the mat. As we exhale, we'll press our low back into the mat. Slowly start to feel the hips up towards the ceiling. One vertebrae at a time. Inhaling at the top of your bridge, exhaling slowly, take the hips back down. And we'll flow through a few more of those in your own time, moving with your breath. Feel free to switch up the arms as you'd like to. And flow through one more bridge. And the next time your hips are down on the mat, let the arms open up wide and the knees windshield wiper side to side, release the low back. One more time each direction. And we'll meet with our knees back at center. Let's lift up our left foot and cross our left ankle onto the right knee, letting the left knee fall open into a figure four shape. And we'll take a moment here, if you'd like to bring your hands to the tops of the legs, press the hands into the legs to lengthen out the low back. If it feels good on your low back, you can add a little rock side to side. And then taking as much time as you want right here, if this is feeling really nice on your low back, take a little bit longer. If you would like a deeper hip opener, you can start to draw the left shin in towards the chest. Maybe interlacing the hands around the right hamstring if the hands reach. And then you don't have to be still here if you want to bend and straighten the right leg, circle the right ankle, rock side to side, whatever feels natural in your body.
And then if you're holding on to that right leg, release those hands so you can take the right foot down to the mat. We'll let our arms open up wide. Inhaling here. As we exhale, we're going to let the shape fall over to the right side. So our left foot is reaching down towards the floor. If it doesn't quite touch, you can just rest that foot on the right leg. Other option is to reach with this right hand. And if you can comfortably grab that foot, it's going to kind of depend on how long your arms are there as well. But if you've got the right hand on the left ankle, you can kind of pull the leg towards each other and resist away with that left leg. It's kind of a hard thing to describe here, but you get a nice opening through the left IT band, the outside of the left hip. If you really resist the leg into that hand, it just kind of deepens that twist, that hip opener. Okay, releasing the hand from the ankle if you're holding on. Inhale the shape back to center. Now we'll uncross our left leg and reach that left foot up towards the ceiling. Coming into a really gentle hamstring stretch. It's still early in our practice, so don't force this. You can just stay right here where the hands can interlace high up on that hamstring, behind the knee, calf, or all the way down towards the ankle if you want a really deep stretch here. And then if you're still not feeling much here, you can also reach that right leg long. But again, don't force anything. Doesn't have to be your deepest hamstring stretch. Just here for about three more breaths. If you took your right leg long, go ahead and re-bend into the right leg, releasing the left, planting that left foot down on the mat. And we'll do this on the other side. Crossing our right ankle onto the left knee. Again, take a moment here. Anything you'd like, you can bring the hands to the, <laughs> sorry, to the hip flexors. Press the legs away from the upper body. Add a little tiny rock side to side. And then taking longer here, if this is feeling good. Or if and when you feel ready, right shin can draw in towards the chest. Maybe fingers interlace around the left hamstring. Again, any movement that feels good on your body here. If you lifted up your left foot, start to bring it back down to the mat. We'll come into that twist, letting the arms open up wide. Inhaling here. As we exhale, our left knee falls towards the floor. Right foot falls along for the ride and wherever that foot can comfortably touch. And then if that left hand can reach the right ankle, you can hold onto that ankle, kind of pull the leg away from the hand, and that'll really open up through the outside of the right hip. If you're holding on to that ankle, Releasing the left hand, we'll bring the legs back to center. Uncrossing our right ankle, we'll reach the right foot up towards the ceiling. And check in on this hamstring. You can stay right here, you can hold on wherever you'd like to. Maybe reach the left leg long. If you took your left leg long, start to re-bend into the left leg, releasing right foot down beside it, and we'll draw both knees back in towards the chest. Roll completely over to either side, catch yourself with your hands, and we'll slowly help ourselves up to any comfortable seated position. Feel free to grab something to sit on if you've got a pillow, a blanket, folded up towel, anything to lift those hips. And as you get comfortable here, start to roll through the shoulders. The shoulders can roll together. You can do one at a time. Letting go of any stress or tension you've been carrying there. A couple more of those. And relaxing the shoulders down and back. As you inhale, start to sweep the hands up towards the ceiling. Exhaling, we'll bring the palms together and down through the heart. Moving with your breath, inhale to reach. 
exhaling through the heart. A couple more of those in your own time. And last one, let's meet with hands at the heart. And this time we'll come into a twist. Inhale to sweep the hands high. As we exhale, we'll twist over to the right, letting the hands fall wherever they land. Gentle gaze over the right shoulder if that feels okay on your neck. On each inhale, see if you can sit up a little straighter, a little taller. Each exhale, relax deeper into your twist. On your next inhale, start to sweep your way back to center. And we'll keep our right hand reaching high, left hand releases down towards the floor. Try to relax that right shoulder, and we'll reach up and over to the left. So this left hand can stay in close, or you can start to walk that hand out farther to deepen the side stretch. And if you fold it really deep, just start to lengthen through that left leg, or what is this, left arm a little bit more. And we'll bend our right elbow and bring the right hand to the back of the head. So we'll inhale here. As we exhale, we're going to round. So think like cat back. We're going to bring our right elbow towards our left knee. Inhale to open that elbow back up, maybe gazing towards the ceiling. We're going to do that a few more times. Exhaling, rounding elbow towards the knee. Inhaling back up. Two more of those in your own time. Last one, you can release that right arm high again. Inhaling left hand up to meet the right. We'll exhale hands down through the heart. And then we'll find a forward fold, any fold that works for your body. You can bring the hands to the knees and just round forward here. You can also start to walk those hands forward. If this hurts knees, you can also bend the knees and plant the feet and then just round forward from there. Start to slide the hands in. I have a dog head on my hand. Let go, Frank. Let me go. All right, we're hopping the hands back in. If you were seated cross legged like I am and you want that fold on the other side, just sit back and cross the ankles the other way or sit any other way that feels good on knees and hips. And we'll do all that on the other side. Inhale to sweep the arms high. Exhaling, twisting over to the left, gazing over the left shoulder, taking a few rounds of breath here. As we inhale, we'll sweep our way back to center. Our left hand stays high this time. Right hand releases down towards the floor. Try to relax the left shoulder as you reach up and over to the right. And if you want a deeper side stretch, walk that hand out. If you reach the elbow down towards the floor. And if you really were that deep side stretch, just lift up a little bit. So you can bring the left hand to the back of the head and we'll do those little twisty things. I don't know what this is called, but it feels good. Inhale to open up, exhaling, rounding left elbow towards the right knee. Inhale, opens us back up. Exhaling, round. Inhaling, back up. I think we did four on the other side, so two more of those in your own time. Okay, right, after you finish that fourth one, left hand pulls you the rest of the way up. Exhaling hands through the heart, and then we'll find that fold again. So any position of the legs you'd like, walking the hands forward, try to let your head and neck relax down wherever you end up here. And slowly start to walk the hands back in towards the body. We're going to move forward to hands and knees. So patting your knees as needed. If you have a blanket or a towel, you can slide that onto your mat if you're on a hard surface here. And we're stacking our knees underneath our hips. Our hands are underneath the shoulders. If anyone's taking care of their wrists today, you can also come onto your fists here whenever that feels better. As we inhale, we'll lift our tailbone towards the ceiling, pulling the heart forward, lifting the chin through cow. As we exhale, we'll round through the spine, tucking the chin into cat. 
Inhaling, pulling forward through cow. Exhaling, rounding into calves. A few more times through those, adding in any other movement that feels good on your body. You can wag the tail, tuck the toes, really bend the elbows. One more time through those. Whenever you feel ready, we'll meet in child's pose. Your knees can stay aligned with the hips or they can open up as wide as your mat. Sticking the hips towards the heels, the hands can start to walk forward. Forehead reaching down towards the floor, though it may or may not touch. On your next inhale, start to lift back up through hands and knees. I'm going to slide those knees back in line with the hips, spreading wide through the fingers. We'll tuck our toes and lift the hips up and back, finding downward facing dog. If it's your first down dog of the day or your millionth, you can start to find some movement here, bending through the knees, lifting up onto the heels, sway the hips. We're here for one more breath. On your next exhale, take a deep bend in the knees. Slowly start to walk the feet towards the hands or the hands towards the feet. Finding a forward fold, keeping your knees soft. I don't know if you can see Frankie right now. She's on her back. It's really funny. <laughs> We're gonna hang out this forward fold. The hands can rest on the legs, the ankles. You can grab your elbows. Find a little sway side to side. Really decompressing through the low back. Releasing the grip of the elbows if that's where you came. On your next inhale, start to slide up the legs, lifting halfway up in a nice flat low back. Exhaling, sliding back into our forward fold. As we inhale, we'll sweep the arms out to the side, reverse swan dive your way up to standing. Exhaling hands down through the hearts. All right, we're gonna make our way back down and we will be on a knee for a little bit. So again, grab a blanket if you need that extra padding. Grab a block if you have one or you can hold on to any furniture, books, get creative. So stepping up towards the top of the mat so you have a little bit of room behind you. We'll inhale to sweep the hands high. As we exhale, we'll dive back into our forward fold. As we inhale, we'll lift halfway up. Find that length, exhaling, melting back into our forward fold, and we'll keep our right foot at the top of our mat, our left foot steps back to find a lunge. So any lunge that works for your body, just gazing down and making sure your right ankle is stacked under your right knee to protect your knee. But then other than that, do whatever else you want here. You can lower that left knee down to find a low lunge. With that knee up or down, if you'd rather climb up onto that right leg, you can do that as well. If you climb your way up and you want different arms, you can explore those. But whatever lunge you're in here, try to relax your shoulders. Keep lengthening through the low back. Especially if you climb your way up onto that right leg. Find somewhere still to focus the eyes. It'll help with your balance there. As we exhale, we'll start to bring hands back down the frame with the right foot. If you have your left knee up, just go ahead and lower down, join us there. And we'll start to walk our hands back as we lengthen out our right leg to find a hamstring stretch. Flexing the right toes back. Keep a little micro bend in this right knee if this is a lot on the hamstring. Just like in our lunge, try to stay open through the heart, keep lengthening through the spine. Try to reconnect with your breath here. As we inhale, we'll start to re-bend into the right leg. So we're coming back into that low lunge. And your choice, left knee down or up. But we'll bring our right hand to rest on the right leg. 
As you feel ready, start to sweep the left hand up towards the ceiling. Then you can stay right here or start to reach up and over to the right. So it's a big arch over the body. And then you can stay on this right hand. You can drop down to the elbow or that right hand can reach all the way down towards the floor. So this is just getting them to a different part of that left hip flexor. So a lot of the times when our low back is hurting, it's because our hip flexors have gotten a little tight if you've been sitting a lot. Okay, start to sweep left hand back down, releasing the right if you had it on the knee. And then from here, your choice. Right knee can sweep back to meet the left to find child pose. You can go to down dog. If you really want to move in your practice today from your down dog, you can rock forward to plank. Chaturanga to lower down to your mat. Find cobra or up dog. And then lifting up and back to down dog or child pose. So that's a vinyasa, a sun salutation. And if you want a more active practice, feel free to throw those in whenever you need to. And let's all meet up in down dog. On your next exhale, deep bend in the knees, walk, step, or hop your way back up towards the hands. As many steps as you need. We'll inhale to lift halfway up. Exhaling into our forward fold. And we'll keep our left foot forward this time, right foot steps back, finding your lunge. And we'll hold this lunge the longest. So whatever you need to feel comfortable and supported here, using walks or any other props you have, lowering that right knee down if that's a better lunge for you today. Doesn't have to be the same as the first side, but if and when you feel ready to climb your way up, you can rest the hands on the leg, hands come to the heart, reach the arms high, anything you need here. All right, let's start to bring the hands to frame our left foot. Slowly start to walk the hands back as you lengthen out the left leg. Find that hamstring stretch. Think about drawing the shoulder blades towards each other so you're staying nice and open through the heart. Keep lengthening through the spine best you can. All right, as we inhale, we'll rebend into our left leg and high lunge or low lunge, whichever you're more comfortable with. Our left hand will rest on the left leg this time as we sweep our right hand up towards the ceiling. Take a moment to find your balance there. And we'll reach up and over to the left. Again, you can stay on that left hand, left elbow, or left hand down towards the floor. We'll start to release the right hand down, release the left if you had it on the leg, and we'll sweep our left knee back to the right, In your choice, child pose, down dog, or vinyasa. Do whatever your body needs. I think we're about to have a thunderstorm, at least in East Memphis. If I lose power, stay tuned and I'll get in on my phone without Wi-Fi. Just FYI. Hopefully it won't happen. All right, let's meet up in down dog. We'll take a deep bend in the knees. This time you can walk the feet towards the hands or the hands towards the feet, doesn't matter either way. We'll inhale to lift halfway up. Exhaling, folding forward. Inhaling, sweeping up to standing. Exhaling, hands down through the heart. All right, we're gonna stay standing for a little bit here. And we're going to step wide on our mat, so it doesn't matter which way you're facing. But set those feet super wide, and we're going to have our heels towards each other, toes slightly apart. And the arms can either come out straight from the shoulders, or you can lift them slightly, so you're making a star with your body. We'll inhale here. As we exhale, we'll bend the elbow and draw the elbows, or bend the knees, draw the elbows in towards the ribs. Inhale to lengthen and reach. Exhaling, bend. And we're going to keep flowing like this. Option to hinge at the hips and reach down towards the floor as you bend the knees as well. If you're choosing that option, just keep the core really strong so you don't topple over backwards. And you can do it every time, you can do it every other time. 
Switch it up as you please. Right, last one. And we're gonna hold it down in this nice wide squat. So you can bring the hands to the knees, find a little rock side to side, and we'll take a twist while we're down here. Dropping the right shoulder towards the floor. And gently press out on that right knee. Inhaling through center, exhaling, dropping the left shoulder. Inhaling through center, exhale to lengthen out the legs. And we'll pivot our toes towards the long end of the mat now. Bringing the hands to the hips, or if you'd rather find a shoulder opener, you can reach back for either opposite elbows or interlace the fingers. We'll inhale the shoulders down and back, exhaling, hinging forward. If you chose that shoulder opener, don't feel like you have to stay here the whole time. You can release the hands down towards the floor or a block or a couch if you're near one. We'll take about five breaths in this wide leg forward fold. And if you are in that shoulder opener, you can use the hands to pull you up. Otherwise, hands can slide up to the hips. You can press into the hips as you lift your way up to standing. And we're going to keep our feet wide, but we'll pivot our right toes towards the short end of the mat. So feel free to adjust if you can't see there. We'll take a deep bend into the right knee. So our right knee is bending over the right ankle, finding warrior two. From here, we'll reach those arms long. Energy through the fingertips, feeling very strong, in control, in your warrior two. Pressing down evenly through the feet, feeling really grounded on this windy day. On our next inhale, we'll start to lengthen through our right leg. Exhaling, right hand reaches forward, left hand reaches high, finding triangle. Other options for this left arm today, you can bend the left elbow and rest it on the hip. You can also bring that hand behind the head like we did in that little seated series. Makes the core connect a little bit more here. We'll inhale, left hand releases. If you had it bent, let that left hand lift you all the way up. We're just gonna do those two poses on the other side. So it's okay if you can't see me, I'm not gonna do anything new. Pivoting left toes towards the other short end of your mat. Deep bend into the left leg. Find your warrior two. Taking a few breaths here, maybe gazing down the left hand. On your next inhale, start to lengthen through the left leg. Exhaling, left hand reaches forward, right hand reaches high. Finding your triangle. And maybe finding those other variations, bending the left or sorry, right elbow to rest the hand on the hip, or maybe rest that hand behind the head. Really keeps your heart nice and open, strengthens the core. Really lengthen out that right arm if you had it bent. Inhale brings us back up to standing. And we'll just pivot our left toes to match the right, and we'll come back to this wide leg forward fold. You have an option to find that shoulder opener. Or hands can come to the hips, just melting forward. Let it go. If you want some movement here, you can alternate bending the knees, swaying side to side, anything else that feels good here. One more breath, even out the legs if you are swaying. We'll slide the hands up towards the hips, or if you're in that shoulder opener, hands can lift you up. Lifting ourselves all the way up to standing, and then you can either just walk the feet together, or hop them together, shake it out a little bit. All right, we're just gonna do one balance here. Rooting down through our, well, it doesn't matter which leg, either leg, pick a leg, any leg. If you need something to hold on to, feel free to move towards a wall. But we'll be shifting our weight into that first standing leg. Opposite knee bends out to the side. And that foot can stay on the floor the whole time, or you can slide that foot up to the calf, elbow out up over the knee, or any other version of tree you like to practice. Same thing goes with the arms, you can reach them. 
in any direction, whatever helps your balance or challenges your balance. If tree is really easy for you and you want a new level of difficulty, try closing your eyes and see what that does to your balance. One more breath here. And start to release whatever foot you had up. Let it go, you can shake it out if you want to. Okay, and we'll start to ground down through our other leg. And any version of tree doesn't have to be the same as the first side, making any adjustments you need for the standing leg or this bent knee. And arms can be different or the same. Find somewhere still to focus the eyes if you're keeping them open, or you can experiment with closing them even just for a second. One more breath here. We're gonna place that foot back down, shake it out, let it go. All right, I lied, we're gonna do one more balance. So holding on to a wall if you want to, I'm gonna do it sideways to show you that option. And you can stand on either leg, whichever one you want to do first, whichever one you weren't just standing on. So we're gonna find a little gentle chair pose. So we haven't done chair yet today, but normally it's really deep. This is more like a bar stool. And we're gonna take whichever arm isn't holding onto the wall, or if you're out in the center, just take the arms out to the side. We're going to shift our weight into one leg and cross ankle to ankle. So both knees are bent, one knee is open out to the side. And then your choice, you can stay right there or you can reach out and help that foot up and over your standing knee. So we're in that figure four shape, but standing. And you can stay right here or you can start to hinge forward. If you're not using your wall, you can bring both hands to rest on the cross leg. If you want even more, hands can reach down towards the floor. Now really deepen that stretch. So it's more about the stretch than the balance. So that's why I didn't really want to call this one a balance. It's a standing figure four. And if you let go of your wall, if you're using one, just bring the hand back to the wall so you can lift yourself up, uncross the legs, shake it out, especially that leg that was lifted. All right, doing the other side, you can turn yourself around if you're using the wall. Gentle bend in the knees and shifting your weight into whichever leg you weren't just standing on. You can keep ankle to ankle. That's a safer option if you have any knee injuries or hip injuries even. You can stay right there the whole time or help that other ankle up over the standing leg's knee. Again, you can just stay right there, fold forward any amount. Frankie heard a sound. There she is. And maybe both hands to that cross shin or reaching down towards the floor. You can even bring hands to the heart. Forgot to mention that one on the other side. It's real fun, right? <laughs> Everyone's like, this is a balance, Katie. This isn't easy. All right, lifting up, uncross the leg, let it go. Just a yoga pose, let it go. All right, one more thing standing here. Again, you can do this holding onto the wall, it's not a balance. But we're going to step our right foot forward, left foot steps back, set it for pyramid. So have the feet at least as wide as the hips. If balance isn't your friend's day, it's a windy day, it happens. Take those feet a little bit wider. But it's like you've got little headlights on your hip bones, try to shine them in the same direction. We'll inhale to lengthen the spine as we exhale, we'll start to hinge from our hips, folding forward. And then from here, those hands can start to walk down that right leg, any amount. Try to keep your spine long, the heart open. And our goal is to get a nice little flat tabletop on our low back. So you can try shifting a little bit more weight into that right leg and that'll automatically flatten out the low back. Here for one more breath. 
Start to soften through the right leg, slowly climb your way up to standing, and you can bring a hand to your wall if you're near byline to lift back up. Stepping the left foot forward, shake it out a little bit. And we'll do the other side. So our left foot is forward, right foot is stepping back. A nice wide stance. Try to steer both hip bones towards the short end of your mat or whatever you're standing on. Keep the length of the spine as you hinge forward. And then one or both hands can walk down that left leg. And this hamstring may be a whole different story, so listen to how far you need to fold here. Might be less of a fold, might be deeper. And shifting a little bit more weight into your left leg to create that nice little tabletop on your low back. One more breath here. Start to soften into the left leg, slowly climb your way up, support yourself as needed. As you feel ready, stepping the right foot up to meet the left, shake it out, let it go. And we're gonna make our way back down to down dog, back down to down dog, that's hard to say. Inhale, the sweep the arms high. Exhaling, knees soften as we dive forward. Inhale to lift halfway up. Exhaling deep under the knees, however you would like to get to down dog. If you want to vinyasa, sun salutation, your way there. Or you can just step the feet back, lift those hips. Sign your down dog. And then from down dog, let's take the knees down to the mat, hips towards the heels, child's pose, take a little break. Okay, from our child's pose, we'll start to slide the hands in towards the knees. Careful on your knees as you lift yourself up to seated. Drop the hips to either side, swing the legs around. So we're going to be seated for a while here, so you can adjust your screens as needed so you can see me. So I'm going to overwhelm you with options for a second here. So we're going to come into this kind of Z sit or stag. It's kind of a modification on pigeon. So we're going to have our right leg forward and send our left leg back. So both of my knees are bent. Kind of, I wore like all black today, it's kind of hard to see. So my right knee is ideally in line with my right hip bone, but you can adjust that as needed. And then put props wherever you need them. My back hip likes to cramp up here, but if I put a blanket under my knee, it helps it release a little bit. So get yourself comfortable. And if this is really uncomfortable, then you can lengthen that left leg, you can draw it in closer. This is also a variation on pigeon. So if anyone has pigeon in their practice, you just square off the hips and lengthen out that left leg. That just puts a lot of weight into that right knee. So choose whichever variation works for you. Then we're going to fold forward. So if you have both knees bent, if you're in the variation I'm in right now, bring the hands to frame that right knee. That's a good place to start your fold. If you need more of a twist, you can walk the left hand to outside of the right knee. But we'll start to fold forward over that right leg. And you can be a pigeon here. You can also be on your back doing figure four, if that's another variation for you there. That's a big hip opener, so try to relax into it. If you drop down to your elbows, start to lift back up onto the hands. And we're going to go to the other side. So if you're in pigeon, normally for a pigeon, we pass through down dog to get in and out of it. So you can do that if you want to. Hi, Frankie. Or if you're in that little Z position, you can just spin yourself around. Doesn't matter if you're not facing the camera anymore. So we have our left leg forward, right leg is back. Remember all those variations, tips I gave on the other side, props wherever you need them. You can also be a pigeon here, whatever works for your hips. And then we'll bring the hands towards that left leg, either towards the shin or framing that knee or into that twist. 
and we'll start to walk forward. Hi, Frankie. Please don't lay down right in front of me. <laughs> Come here, girl. You have to be the center of attention, don't you, Frankie? Come on, move over a little bit, just a little bit. Nope. Got a stubborn dog over here. A few more breaths, wherever you are. Start to lift up onto your hands if you fold it forward. And we're just going to swing around to seat it. So, whichever variation you're in, move myself over so you can see around my dog. This is the one fun part about teaching and taking from home, right? Come on, Frankie. Come on, the family down. I brought your blanket. This is her favorite blanket. Nope. Okay. I'll just scooch over. All right. We're going to take our right leg long in front of us and we'll bend our. Sorry, our right leg is long in front of us. Left knee is bending in. There she goes. <laughs> We're gonna find a hamstring stretch. With our hands framing that right leg, inhale to lengthen the spine. As we exhale, we'll fold forward. She's not gonna like that. Sorry, Frankie. That's where you chose to hang out. And then your choice. You can keep the spine nice and long, or if you'd rather just collapse into this fold, as long as that doesn't put too much strain on your neck or your low back. Start to walk the hands back in towards the body. And we're going to keep the legs how they are because I've got a dog laying on me. We're just going to rotate our torso towards our bent left leg. And our right hand will slide down the inside of the right leg. And we'll roll that left shoulder open. And then from there, if you want to come back to our little bent elbow position, which just really helps open up the heart, you can also reach that arm higher all the way up and over towards that right leg as well. Right, let's inhale, let the left hand pull us back up. As we exhale, we'll bring our left knee with us in towards the chest. Okay, Frankie, you gotta move for this one. Here you go. So you can keep that foot on the inside or you can step it all the way up and over the right leg. And we're gonna take a twist here. So our right leg is still long, left knee is bent in. We'll wrap our right arm around the top knee, left hand down towards the floor behind. We'll exhale to unwind back to center. If you are taking care of knees and hips, just stay right here as we go through these next few poses. If your right knee is feeling good today, you can rock onto the right hip and bend that right knee under and then sit the left side back down. But if you get into that and your bottom knee starts to yell at you, just reverse. Then you can either stay here or the left knee can stack on top of the right. So our knees are stacked here. And then you can stay upright the whole time or start to hinge forward. Use your next inhale to lift yourself back up to seated. If you had your legs tangled up like me, carefully uncross that left leg, slide the right leg out, shake them out a little bit. And we'll do this on the other side. So we're going to keep our left leg long this time. Right knee bends in, just finding the hamstring stretch, bringing the hands to frame the leg. Inhale to lengthen the spine. Exhale to walk those hands down alongside the leg. And the spine can stay long or you can relax forward as long as that feels okay on your spine there. So they start to walk the hands back in towards the body, keeping the legs how they are. Just rotate the torso towards your bent right leg 
and we'll slide our left hand down the inside the left leg, rolling the right shoulder open. And whatever you'd like to do with that right arm, it can stay resting on the knee, it can come to the back of the head, you can reach that high leg, or hand high or up and over. If you bend that right arm, use it to lift you back up. As we end this, we'll bring our right knee in towards the chest. That foot can stay on the inside. You get yourself comfortable there. Or you can step that foot up and over, and we'll take a twist. Left arm wraps around the top knee, right hand down towards the floor. We'll exhale to unwind. Again, you can stay in this shape. If this is feeling good for your body, you can fold forward from here. Otherwise, if your left knee is feeling good, rocking onto the left hip so you can tuck that leg under. Make sure that knee is bending under, not that way. And then the knees can stay staggered or right knee is stacked on top of the left. Then you can stay seated straight and tall in any of those variations or start to fold forward. Use your next inhale to lift back up to seated. Exhaling to uncross the legs, shake them out. And we'll bend both knees, bringing the soles of the feet towards each other this time. Sitting up straight and tall, rolling the shoulders down and back. You can stay right here or start to hinge forward. And this one, you definitely want to keep a nice long spine. You don't really want to collapse into this fold. Keeping the shoulder blades pulling towards each other. Try to connect with your breath on each inhale so you can lengthen a little bit more. Exhale, release into this fold. Use your next inhale to lift yourself all the way back up. We'll draw the knees together. Now reach both legs long in front of us. This time let's inhale to sweep the hands up towards the ceiling. As we exhale, we'll start to hinge from the hips. And then let your hamstrings tell you where to stop there. Once you found a good spot for you, let the arms just fall towards the floor or the legs. If you've got a strap or a belt, you can also hook that around the feet. That same breath we had in butterfly. Inhale to lengthen the spine, exhaling, melting the heart down towards the legs. If you would like to let the head and neck go this time, you can. Just try to surrender into this fold. Let's take three more breaths here. We're going to take a nice long time in this fold today. And slowly start to walk the hands in towards the hips, bending through the knees and scooching up towards the top of your mat. If you don't have a dog on your mat. Then we're going to roll ourselves all the way back down. We'll be down for the rest of class, so feel free to move your screen. Lowering down. Once you get down there, just cut those knees in towards the chest. Rock side to side. Move mine closer for y'all, too. All right, we're releasing the feet down to the mat, and we're going to come back to bridge like we did at the beginning of class. So if you do have any blocks or even like a dense pillow would work, you can take that and place it underneath your hips for a restorative bridge. 
and anything will work here. A couch cushion works really well. But just like a normal bridge, you want to keep the head and neck still. And you can have it at any height if you want it more the same height that you would normally have with your hips lifted. This just opens up through the hip flexors again. And then any arms you want. If you're not using a prop, you can take the hands underneath where the hips were to interlace the fingers, open up through the hip flexors. And we'll take about three to four more breaths here. If you have some sort of prop underneath your hips, just activate the legs so you can lift your hips up and slowly take the hips back down to the mat. Once you get down to the mat, let the knees fall towards each other, press the low back into the mat. Take a moment here. And we'll start to heel toe our feet in towards each other. And we're going to lift up our right leg and cross our right knee completely over the left. So this is that same pose we did seated a moment ago. This just takes the pressure off the knees. So different from our figure four, our knees are squeezing towards each other. And you can just stay right here with your left foot down, or you can start to draw the knees in towards the chest. Again, that might be enough there. Then you can hold on wherever you can reach. You can be behind the hamstring on that top knee. Hands can also come to the shins or the ankles, and you can kind of pull them away from each other. This is getting into the right side of the low back, right into that area where you might feel sciatic pain. One more breath here. And releasing whatever grip you have on the legs, touching the left foot back down. We'll uncross the right. And let the soles of the feet find each other and the knees fall open. So we're in our flying butterfly. If you'd like to bring one hand to the heart, one hand to the stomach. We'll just take a few breaths here. Just let those inner thighs release. We'll bring the hands to the outsides of the legs, helping the knees back together and doing that on the other side. So our left knee is crossing over the right. Again, that right foot can stay planted or you can draw those knees in towards the chest, holding on wherever you can reach, maybe grabbing those ankles and pulling the legs a little bit away from each other. Here you a nice little knot with the legs. Start to release whatever grip you have on the legs, touching the right foot down, uncrossing the left. And then your choice for a hip opener this time. You can come back to butterfly, or you can start to draw the knees in towards the chest. Take the knees wide for happy baby pose, reaching for the feet. You can add a little rock side to side if you chose happy baby. If you're in happy baby, just start to release the grip on the feet or the knees, draw those knees in towards the chest. If you were in butterfly, just help the knees together so we can all meet up here. And we're going to take a final twist. I'm way too close to my wall to do this. We're going to take the arms out wide, inhaling here. As we exhale, we'll let both knees fall over to the right side. Then you can turn and gaze towards the left hand if that feels okay on the neck. And then any other variation on this twist, if you'd rather do one leg at a time, if you'd rather cross the legs, anything goes here. Use your next inhale to draw the knees back through center. Exhaling both knees fall over to the left. Any version of a twist there. We'll inhale the knees back in towards the chest, wrapping the arms around the legs, taking a long inhale here. As you exhale, start to release your legs long or any other comfortable position, finding your way into Shavasana. 
And like I was saying at the beginning of class, practicing at home can be really difficult, especially Shavasana, especially stillness. So if you need to sit up for Shavasana, if you need to put your legs up on a couch or up a wall, if you need to grab a pillow, it's not gonna be a super long relaxation here. But try to stay present in your body. Take a moment to scan through from head to toe, inviting any residual knots of tension to soften and release. And if your mind starts to wander away from your body to things you feel like you should be doing, just bring your attention back to your breath. Following each inhale and exhale as it moves, your, moves through your body. And give yourself permission to be still and do nothing for these last few minutes. Slowly start to reawaken your body, inviting small movements into the hands and feet. If you're on your back, on your next inhale, find a full body stretch, reaching the legs long, arms up over the head. Exhaling to draw the knees in towards the chest, wrapping the arms around the legs, thanking your body and everything it's capable of, giving yourself a big hug. Rolling completely over to either side, and slowly making your way up to any comfortable seated position. And we'll all meet up with our palms together, bringing our hands to our forehead, to our third eye, as a reminder to have clear and loving thoughts. Bringing our hands to our lips, as a reminder to have clear and loving words and to our heart to always have clear and loving intentions. Thank you all so much for your practice today. Namaste. All right, thank, thank you, you everybody. Thanks for dealing with Frankie. She was extra needy today. But I hope everyone's staying healthy, staying happy, keep moving. It definitely helps. Thank you. I hope to see you in real life soon. <laughs> Bye. Thank Bye. you, Katie.